Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Really glad you could make it. In last week's episode, my Jax took a beating from King Five Off Suit, a royal flush was made, and someone went runner runner straight as we brought you all the action from our newest River Rat inductees. And as promised, this week we're going to bring you even more poker excitement as we've got hands from the No Knit Show. This is the game where players are enticed to dive deep into the action as everyone is given a yellow knit button. And the way to get rid of your knit button is to take down a pot. The last player with their knit button in front of them must pay a penalty for being the table knit. Not to mention the smack talking that comes with having that badge of dishonor. So sit down in that chair right there and enjoy these hands of fun as we bring you this $1, $3 poker game. But don't let that fool you because the average pot is between 200 and 300 bucks. And the largest hand of this night is slightly shy of $3,000. No fooling. So let's get into the action and see who takes down that pot. It is going to be interesting to see. We have a, a player coming at the. At, they just said that that's getting chips, but right now, with the players that have got knocked out, it's six handed, which changes the whole dynamic of the game. You're right. Yeah, hand strengths go up. Until we get that seventh player, how many. How many? Oh, here we go. Speak. Oh, we got Marty in the house. Marty! Marty Ball coming in to play cash. Driving all the way over here from Pittsburgh. I was kind of curious how the six-handed would take shape if we were like that for a few more hands, Vic, but we don't have to worry about that at the moment. But that really does change the game once you go the six-handed. I stroll on in like I'm trying out for the Macy's Day Parade, and I get a big old howdy-do from the fellas after a lackluster showing during the satellite for a big tournament buy-in. I sits right down with my 670 in front of me and am promptly given the rules of the game by Buddha. And in the first hand, I'm in the mandatory straddle of 10 bucks. In right, just to my left, he puts on the double straddle. Then Buddha, he raises to $50 with pocket nines. He's had these a few times tonight. Welcome to the table, sister. Gam, next to act, looks down at the nemesis and decides to complete for 50 bucks. Folds go around, and I release the 10-5 of diamonds over to Enright, who looks down at the lovely red ladies. Now, he decides to smack these fellas with his crazy aggression and makes a huge overbet as he slides his entire stack of 970 bucks across the betting line. <laughs> Both Buddha and Gam have seen this scary movie clip before, and they make very disciplined folds. And as Buddha announces his folded hand to the table, Enright quietly pulls in his $100 profit. For hand number two, I'm in the big blind, and Enright puts out the rock for his mandatory straddle. Gam, who probably has some revenge on his mind, raises Enright's straddle to $35, holding on to 10 deuce of spades, and folds go around to our table Hulkamaniac in the small blind. He sees a couple of suited Broadway cards, so he flats, and then I take a gander down at Ace King off suit. Now, being a super fan of this show, because I've been watching these fellas and their YouTube shenanigans pretty much every week since last year, I know this raise is fairly standard in this $1, $3 poker game. So, I decide to punish these fellows and 4-bet. That's right, coach. I'm going to do it. I 4-bet to 115 smackaroonies. Eh, 115 bucks. In right, he scoffs at my puny half-pot-sized bet, and, well, he's probably still mad at me for exposing his laundry proclivities in a previous vlog. He makes the call, and Gam, who, well, he didn't really have that much in the first place, quickly releases his hand back to our Hulkamaniac. Okay, his name is Jeff, but look at his shirt. Jeff does some quick math and decides to hold on to Justin Timberlake and see if they can make it to Broadway and tosses in an additional $70. 
The pot is beaming with 380 bucks, and we're going three ways to a flop as Fast Eddie lays down King 6 7 rainbow. Jeff quickly checks, and I start to fiddle a bit with my chips, trying to hold back my emotions as I consider whether or not I should be prepared to be in righted. A 6 7 is definitely within Bob's wheelhouse. But it's so difficult to put him on a range. I don't have the knit button, and I didn't just travel 350 miles from Pittsburgh to Toledo to play scared either. So I cut out a bet of a few green chips, and I proudly announce my bet of 225 bucks. Now, I think I might have been given off just a little too much of the strength of my hand, because Enright flashes me a quick ushka ushka look and decides to fold. Not to mention he really has none of this board, and Jeff, he does the same. So after a quick victory fist raise to the air and scooping in that $600 pot, I can finally feel the nerves beginning to fade. But hold on to that thought, because a couple of hands later, the action gets even spicier. Okay. Because it's a mandatory $10 now. Got it. Got it. Um, Eddie? What up? Time for one of these two to go. Which two? So we can do another one. Oh. All right. <laughs> Now, it's a well-known fact that Reserve Bob loves to amuse the table just to keep the action light by poking fun at other players, and he points out that we still have a couple of folks holding on to their knit buttons. But not Bob. He decides to call the straddle with four three of hearts, and a couple of folds are made when Hulkamaniac, uh, Jeff, he finds a couple of red ladies in the hijack position. Now, Jeff wants to battle with as few a folk as possible, so he inflates the price of poker to $60. That's when I look down at a hand that's, well, probably more often than not better for blackjack than hold him. And knowing what I don't know about this game, I decide to flat to the button to see what materializes and snarkily comment back to the guy holding the real hand. I'm just calling because I got the button. Right. That's when Enright drops the bomb on us, baby. He's pulled in a few pots from a couple of previous hands and knows just how hard it is to have a pocket pair preflop and decides a re-raise to 260 is just what's needed to keep his snowmen from melting away. We interrupt our regularly scheduled hand analysis to bring you some exciting math about poker. According to our sources at PokerBank, you will be dealt a random pocket pair once in about every 16 hands or roughly 16 to 1. And the best way to calculate the probability of whether or not other players at the table will hold a larger pocket pair than you is best determined by using this formula called the Gordon Pair Principle, aptly named after Phil Gordon. And to work out the chance of your opponent holding a higher pocket pair than you, simply multiply the number of players left to act by the number of higher pocket pairs than what you currently have in your hand, and then divide by two. Here's the formula. C equals N times R divided by 2, where C equals the percent chance of the remaining opponents having a higher pocket pair than you, N is the number of players left to act, and R is the number of higher pocket pairs than what you currently hold in your hand. So, if there are 5 players left to act and you're holding a pocket 8s, here is the likelihood that your opponents will have a higher pocket pair than what you have. 5 times 6 is 30 divided by 2 equals 15%, or better stated, there's an 85% chance that your hand is good. Until it's not. That's poker, folks. Now back to our no knit game. Our hand is already in progress. Buddha, who always has a game plan before he starts his play, sees a couple of Broadway cards in the big blind and ponders in Wright's three bet. Then he remembers Bob prefers cooking in his new outdoor Weber grill because he got no range in his kitchen. <laughs> so he chucks to the muck and we get right back to Gam. Now, I don't know if it's because he believes his 13% hand is good or because he wants to get rid of his knit button or if he didn't understand that rat math we just saw, or maybe he's just sick of Enright's bullish behaviors. Whatever the case may be, he's ready to risk it all and puts every chip in the middle with his pair of tens. Jeff is absolutely loving this action with well over $800 in the middle and he seems pretty confident that he is holding the best hand for the moment and Given all the action till now, he swings a quick look over to my stack, trying to figure a way to grab my money too. Then he gives a quiet yet manly tone for a guy wearing an orange Hulkamania t-shirt and says all in. Well, I'll tell you, I release my hand faster than a rabbit trying to escape a magic show and I save my chips for the next round. This is now the largest hand of the night. So I 
think it's only appropriate to let our commentators take us through the end of the hand. It all in. I think this will make it easy for Marty. Yep. That's, that's a knit fold. Just oh, that's saying. the right fold, Marty. <laughs> uh, three all ins pretty much ahead of you. Ace Jack turns. I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather have Deuce three than Ace Jack calling that. Most likely you are shared and dominated. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Twenty nine hundred in the middle in a one three game. Wow. Eights, tens, and queen. So give me four fifteen total. And here we go. You had jacks? Cover your eyes. Yeah, Cover your eyes and double. No, I had I had Cover your eyes and ears. Oh, la la la. Yeah, la, la. Wait, somebody does the No, there's gonna be an ace. There's gonna be an ace come up though. Oh yeah. For no sure. one no one has it here? I know. And no one folds one? Oh. I know. That's okay. It's it's the right fold. Oh, it is the right fold. Looking at the hands now, what would you do? Eddie, great job um, here. He's going to get the pot because we got uh, no, we got a side pot. Listen, so he's going to get the main uh, pot correct and then the side pot. Five fifty-nine. You call if you see him. Oh, I have another pot. Yeah. Well, I guess because you get the odds. Oh yeah. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. But at that point, I mean, maybe somebody has ace king. So there's five. Yeah. Big hand alert for him. Call your cousin. Call your friends. Yeah, this is all your friends. You're Big right. Hand alert live at the reserve on Thursday. You just got right to cast. 2,900 in a 1 3 game before we see any cards. Yeah. Call your friends. Call your neighbors. Call your cousins. This is the pot of the night. Yeah. Oh, easily. On the eve of our three year anniversary celebration, 11 day series. Eddie. Thank you, thank you. This is just a great shot. Everything lined up well. Pot's right. Clarifies who's. Here we go. Who's going to win what if they win? And here comes the flop. Nine. Three, seven. Queen's still clean. Can they hold? An ace. That ace would have been Marty's. Uh, we, we knew that was coming. It's always the, the proper fold gets there. Oh, oh an eight on the oh, right. 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 Wow. Right. Right. Good hold, Triples up. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Takes the whole 2,900 his way. And isn't it amazing in poker? How one hand can change your whole night. Uh, it is my favorite hand in poker. Pocket eights. Oh, you take one down, you want to try him again or no? I mean, what? What do you mean? Wowzers. Uh, he was the last one. Wow. Yeah, I lost the ball. Oh, gotcha. Uh, are we gonna try it again? What time is it? Time. It's time for a dealer change. Oh yeah. We're yeah we're supposed to play the whole. The whole Paul. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I know. They, I don't want to bust your game. So. AKA yeah, Poison Arm Paul. Coming in and... Wow, what a tough beat. And even though I've been riding him a little bit for his choice of t-shirt apparel, my hat's off to Jeff for taking that incredible beat and sticking around to finish what he started. And as you can see from his hand a little bit later on in this stream, he's already gotten rid of his knit chip and has started to make a tiny bit of a comeback as I find a playable hand, King-9 offsuit. I make the call, as does Slick Rick, when action gets over to Buddha. Now, as mentioned earlier, Buddha always has a game plan when he plays poker, so I pay particular attention as his tiny little Buddha token gives off an aura of spiritual power when it covers his whole cards. Then, in Zen-like fashion, Buddha masterfully surveys the table like a lion seeking its evening prey near the Congo. Man, I feel a certain sense of he wants me to indulge in the pain of playing less than quality cards right here. And he raises the action to $80, holding Ace King off suit. Now, both Jack and Reserve Bob, well, they're experienced little sailors, and they know how to navigate these headwinds as they make the lay down. But Slick Rick, well, he's been hard at work trying to rebuild from earlier beats, so he decides he's going to stick with his Ace Seven of Clubs and makes the call. 
then with little hesitation and eh, perhaps inkling that if I can win this hand, I won't have to pay the $40 nit penalty, as both Buddha and I still have our little yellow buttons. You know, I think Poison Arm Paul just might need a new nickname because the, this flop he lays down right here sure looks sweet to me. <laughs> Until Buddha makes a C-bet of 200 bucks. Slick Rick makes a double check of his hand, then wisely lays them down, but I have other notions running through my wee little brain. Let's take a listen as I think what we hear next really gives insight to how each of us are approaching this game. Well, hmm. Yeah, because you almost don't want to smooth call this. Yeah, all in. Yeah, I like that decision. Make the decision now. Well, Buddha, let's find out. You got an overpair? Yeah, sure. How many? 200? 200? I'll give you 100. Oh, yeah, I'd say two. Yeah, for sure. Seven thirty-seven. Yeah, I'll give you. Give me a hundred. Appreciate it. I like to see a bunch of make down. Perfect. Thanks, sir. Perfect. Five. Oh. It just seems like every single hand we're getting at least minimal $700, $600 on the pot, if not more. Just non-stop action. And Marty, up to now $1,200. You just sat down yes. in the last 30 minutes and more than yeah. double their money. Nice start. It's got to be good karma for bringing brown water for the commentators. Yes. Oh, what a night. <laughs> a big thank you goes out to Live at the Reserve for hosting such an amazing game. And they're always looking for new folks to join the fun, so be sure and tell them you heard about their show right here. And coming up next Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central, we're going to have even more action and poker shenanigans to bring you. So be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on a thing. And if you have any ideas about future shows, go ahead and pin your comments down below. As always, play smart, play with heart, and always make it fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.